So, now that I'm here, you're just gonna walk out on me, huh? No, I'm gonna give you dinner first. Really, Terry just sounded so depressed when I talked to her that I want to go over there and talk to her. Mm-hmm. She is thinking pretty hard. You know, she's dying to get back to the club, but she's worried that she's not going to give the customers their money's worth. Yeah, well, maybe I can help, you know, help her get some of her confidence back. Anyway, you're going to be busy after dinner quizzing Laura on the test. Mm-hmm. That's going to be rough. Now, uh, when you get to a stop sign, Laura, do you stop, go, or neither of the above? You won't <laughs> think it's so easy when you take a look at some of the questions on that sample test. How long has it been since you've taken that test? Well, ma'am, I'll tell you. When I took the test, the steering wheel, yeah. there were two reins on a <laughs> horse and buggy. <laughs> what else did Terry say? Our conversation didn't get much beyond her memory complications and problems. Uh, well, um, she said that she had seen Monica today when Monica came over to pick up the rest of her clothes and, um, Terry said she seemed to be really upset about everything that's happened, so much so that she felt sorry for her and was wondering what would happen to her when she gets back from the Caribbean. Yeah, Monica was wondering the same thing. Oh, you, uh, you talked with her about it? Mm-hmm. She caught up with me this afternoon, ostensibly to let me know that Steve has given her a few days' leave, but, uh... Yeah, well, it was pretty obvious what she really wanted. She wanted me to go to bat for her and help her stay on at General Hospital. And? Are you? Oh, no way. I told her she was strictly on her own. Well, I, I guess after what she's done to you, there's no reason you should help her. I could walk away from anything that Monica's done to me what she's done to you that I can't forget. Oh, but in spite of everything, I do feel sorry for her. She's lost Jeff, she's lost you, and she may be on the verge of losing her whole career. Well, if she does, she has only herself to blame. Oh, but sweetheart, that's not the point. I mean, becoming a doctor is such, such an incredible investment. All those years of training and Discipline, uh, not to mention the terror at graduation. Uh, will you get uh, picked up by a good hospital? Well, it didn't hurt her to be married to Jeff. Famous Mr. and Mrs. Intern team. I think she would have made it without Jeff. From the very first day of my service, I thought that one is going to be a very special doctor. Oh, I, she was green and she was scared, but I, there was a kind of a dedication about her that set her apart from a lot of the other interns. Yeah, I, I have to admit that she's done good work on my service, too. Aside from the, the personal problems I've had with Monica. Now, you're right. She is a good doctor. Yes, and if Steve does let her go, then could be very difficult for her. She might not get picked up by another hospital. Steve wouldn't be that rough on her. I mean, he wouldn't let her go without a recommendation. Oh, but sweetheart, you know people will see through that. I mean, they'll say, uh, yeah, if she's so terrific, you know, how come General Hospital let her go? Or what is she? Is she a, a troublemaker? Do we really want to take a chance on her? Les, what does all this have to do with you? Well, if it weren't for me and... And the fact that you love me, none of this would have happened. Honey, she was blackmailing you. Yeah, I know. But I guess maybe, um, maybe I have a blind spot for personal flaws where good doctors are concerned. There, there's just too much of a need for them. Listen, um, do you think it was really dumb of me if I went to Steve and put in a word for Monica? You're unbelievable, you know that? After all Monica's cost you, you, you're still willing to stick your neck out for her. Well, she has cost me a lot, yes, but... I still have one very important thing. I have the man I love. 
And that makes me very, very rich. And Monica very poor. Have you studied this now? Do you know all the rules of the road? Well, maybe not all. Wrong answer. I expect you to get 100% on this. It only takes a score of 70 to pass, you know. Mm -hmm. For most mortals, yes. But for the brilliant Laura Faulkner, 100%. Okay. I'll try my best. Okay. Uh, first question. If you come to a stopped school bus with flashing red lights, you must A, stop, B, go around it, or C, back up and go the other way. Stop and wait till the lights stop flashing. Correct. Okay, next question. When two cars reach an intersection at the same time, the legal right of way belongs to A, the car on the right, B, the car on the left, C, the car moving the fastest. Well, if the car moving the fastest didn't stop, I'd give him the right of way. But legally, it's the car on the right. Okay. Well, the last part of your answer was correct. But the first part sounds right to me, too. And maybe you should have written this book. <laughs> okay. Now for a really hard one. When a car and an airplane reach an intersection at the same time, who goes first? <laughs> I'll do it one more time for you. I discussed it with Steve last night. It's a big decision. I thought I could use all the advice I could get. Yeah, I understand. What did Steve say? Well, we both agreed that if the duct just didn't close by this morning, that we'd have to do surgery. That was the only way that the baby had a chance of making it. Well, it's this morning, and the duct just still hasn't closed, so, well, you saw the whole situation for yourself. Yeah. So the time has come, and we have no other alternative, is that it? Yeah, that's about the size of it. It's just not fair. I mean, to be born with the whole deck stacked against you. Rick, level with me. Do you think he's got any chance at all of pulling through it? I hope so, Jeff. I know one thing for sure. He doesn't have a chance of making it without surgery. It's not going to be easy telling him. I know. But she's going to have to be told. Rick, I, I promised her a look at the baby if the surgery had to be done. Sure. I'll arrange that. Maybe the last look she ever gets of him. <sighs> Come on. Now, have a little faith, will you? Keith Raymond is, is the best man around for this type of procedure, and he's the one who's going to be doing it. But skill isn't always enough. We both know that. Well, granted. But at least the baby is going to have the odds in his favor. Okay. If we have to, we have to. What are we waiting for? Nothing. I just wanted you to be here when I call Keith Raymond. All right, you got me. Go ahead and do it. I'll get somebody on it right away. Hey, uh, are you okay? You seem a little uptight about something. A little more than uptight. Here, take a look at this. Well, Mary Ellen's ring. So the insurance company finally tracked it down. No, 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 no. According to my wife, it was under the bedroom carpet when the cleaners picked it up. This goes to show you, buddy. Get your carpets clean regularly. You never know what's under them. <laughs> well, you don't, uh, you don't seem too happy about having it back. Well, I was, until I took a closer look at it. It's a phony. A phony? Yeah, the ring Melly lost had inscriptions, B-L to A-L. Those are her parents' initials. Now, at first, I uh, went out and thought she got, got a duplicate because there's no initials in here. When I got to think about it, though, Melly wouldn't blow $10,000 on a duplicate. So I had a jeweler check it out. That's a fake. It's strictly glass. I mean, whoever did it did a hell of a job, but... Uh, if I hadn't have known that, I, I would have thought uh, permanently this was it. Why would she do something like that? I mean, what reason would she have? You tell me, buddy. There's something about the ring, the way she lost it, she did <laughs> That's what I call. 
all perfect timing. What Rhett Butler, I do declare. Rhett Butler? <laughs> Well, I don't know what brought that on, but uh, flattery will get you everywhere. Really? Mm -hmm. oh. What are you doing out of the clinic right now? Oh, today is Laura's first day as a volunteer, so I came up to help her get settled in with Jesse. Mm-hmm. Hey, how would the two of you like to go on a picnic lunch with me in the park? I know this great little deli. It has the most fantastic box lunches. Oh. We got fried chicken, potato salad, oh. baked beans. Oh, oh, that won't do. Why, you got something against baked beans? No, no, not me, no. Laura is on a diet. Bread and water for a month, only no bread. I, however, being so slim and beautiful, I'm not on a diet. <laughs> Listen, tell me, doctor, could you be coerced into considering a picnic for two? Frankly, Miss Scarlett, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't tell me we had apple pie. Well, I didn't want to show all my cards at once. You know, there's something to be said for surprises. Do you know, when I woke up this morning, I figured that I would be lunching on a wilted cheese sandwich in the hospital cafeteria. Oh, you do spoil me. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's nothing to compare to Venice. I mean, no self-respecting Italian is going to serve you fried chicken on the hard ground. He probably invites you into his gondola, ply you with wine and out the pasta as you gently drifted down the canal. Yeah, well, you know, after a while, it gets a little boring. Hey, uh, tell me the truth. How many of those, um, Romeo types did you have chasing you over there? Dozens. Dozens? Mm-hmm. Sure, there was, um, well, there was, uh, Giovanni. Giovanni? And, uh, there was Luigi. Luigi? And, uh, oh, <laughs> It was Angelo. We can't forget Angelo. Angelo, Angelo was terrific. Terrific, yes. Angelo, yeah. Just how terrific was Angelo? Well, incredibly handsome, of course. He looked he looked a lot like Mastroianni. You know, that kind of dark hair, velvety eyed. Well, you know the look. Sure. And uh, naturally, uh, really rich. Rich, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he was uh, a duke or a count or something. Count. Anyway. I had the worst time getting rid of that man. Do you know that one day he chased my gondola through all the canals of Venice in his gold-plated speedboat? That's it. That's it. Do they still fight duels in Italy? Oh, my love, believe me. You don't have to fight a duel over me. You know, Venice may be the city for lovers, but when you're there all alone, you'll be awfully lonely. I will take a picnic in the park any day with the man I love. Oh. 